how to implement an information risk assessment process. Implement it, we have to establish the domain of risk management within the organization. Management has to say, we want to take care of things. You got to determine how much risk you're willing to deal with. You got to identify your assets, you got to identify the threats, vulnerabilities you have, whether or not those threats can exploit that vulnerability, likelihood of it happening to give you your actual amount of risk, the impact that you're going to receive. So identify those risks, analyze and evaluate the identified risks, how much damage will occur, assess the potential impact and likelihood. You know, meteor strike, rare. Burglar, so-so. Someone stealing candy out of the candy dish every time they walk and they stick their mitt in it and just grab a handful, pretty high. But what's the actual damage on that last one? Not so big, you may not care about it. You know, you lose $5 worth of candy a year, no big deal. Meteor strike, you'll lose everything, but it's going to happen once every million years. Don't worry about it. Burglar happens once every two to three years. You lose 50,000 each time it happens, maybe more. That's probably worth dealing with, even though it's not as often as the candy dish, it's not as catastrophic as the meteor, but damage is high enough when you look at the annual loss expectancy. Identify potential remedies, controls, and countermeasures. We want controls. We want safeguards. We want countermeasures. Safeguards to keep out a burglar, fix the window lashes, put on good locks, put in guard dogs, put up a good fence or wall, have guards around. That's going to discourage someone from even trying. Countermeasures, the guard can stop them, limit what they can do. Barbed wire, yeah, well, they may leave DNA that we can track them with all over the barbed wire. Well, maybe that's not the nicest example, but I think you get the point. Things, cameras, we can see who they are and catch them, recover stuff. Good relationship with the police so that they will actually look for your stuff at the pawn shops. That's a nice countermeasure. You'll get some of it back. Select and implement the most cost-effective controls. I know it says co countermeasures in, in the material. Let's go controls because we want the safeguards as well reduce how often it occurs, and reduce the impact when it does occur, both of them. And remember, it must be cost effective. We don't implement things that cost more than what we're going to benefit. Use a gap analysis. You know how much you want covered. You've done your risk assessment. You know what the impact is going to be. You're a mature organization. You know how much you can deal with. You've done your mitigation. You've maybe assigned out or transferred risk to an insurance company or indemnification. And there's an amount you're willing to accept. That's a residual or acceptable risk. You want to bring things down to that level. How much you actually have covered and what your acceptable level is, they may not be the same. You may not have enough coverage to bring you to that acceptable level. You may need more controls. You may need to manage things differently. That gap between your acceptable risk and what you're currently covering needs to be brought together. The difference is a gap analysis. Accept and manage any residual risk. Residual risk is normally known as your acceptable risk. What you said you're willing to eat. You have a car accident, well you had a safe car that limited the damages, kept you from going to the hospital, you had insurance that pays off the accident, but you are willing to accept a certain amount of that risk and that's called your deductible. That's your acceptable risk or residual risk. Accept it, eat it, pay it out, it's fine and continuously communicate with the organization regarding the status of the risk assessment efforts. If management doesn't know what's happening, they may assume the worst or they may act blindly thinking everything's fine. They're assuming the worst and not pursuing other things because they think risk is too high or they may assume everything's fine and enter into new fields and those fields have risk. If everything goes wrong at once, the risk from your stuff, the risk from their stuff, may be enough to bankrupt the company or cause some significant harm or open the company to suits from the shareholders who feel that the company inappropriately experienced risk that it should not have faced causing harm to the shareholders. And that's not acceptable to them.